You are in Hungary for the first time. How did you come to the idea to visit our country and how do you like it? I, I absolutely love it here. Um, the idea came uh, several months ago. My friend Theodora Goss is a wonderful writer who was born in Budapest. And uh, she invited me to come and stay with her in her grandmother's apartment uh, and write and, and have an adventure here. And I said yes immediately. No, no hesitation at all. Absolutely, I will come with you to Budapest. And uh, so we've been here for two weeks now, mm -hmm. um, writing and, and uh, making a little home in that apartment and, and uh, wandering around the city. And it's, it's absolutely beautiful here. I, I cannot believe how extraordinary the architecture is. I stop every three feet to see some new building that is just the most beautiful building I've, I've ever seen. And then the next one is the most beautiful building I've ever seen too. And the food's extraordinary, and, and everyone's been very friendly, and it's, I, I'm just in love. It's a wonderful place. I'm glad to hear this. And your works are strongly influenced by Eastern Europeans, mainly Russian uh, mythology. Your family background partly explains this. Uh, please tell me about your Russian connections. Um, well, uh, it, it started, uh, I'm married to a Russian man, but it started before that. My stepmother is also Russian, and uh, she's Russian-American. Her grandmother came over. Uh, but there were always bits and pieces of Russian culture in my childhood, and uh, I met a young man named Dmitri, and we fell in love. And uh, his parents lived with us for several years. And so not only was I uh, m married to somebody who lived in the former Soviet Union until he was 11 years old and still very fluent and very immersed in uh, the Russian-American culture, which is somewhat different than mm -hmm. Russian culture, um, but living with his parents, whose very favorite thing is to tell stories about the old country and, and, uh, and all his family who was at the house quite a bit. And uh, so I spent years listening to these stories and his, his family, they're master storytellers. Um, and it became not only part of, of my daily activity, but, but part of my interior world. And uh, I learned to cook Russian, and I've been learning to speak Russian, and, and uh, it's, it's just become part of the fabric of my life in a very, a very real way. But then, weren't you told the Russian folk as, uh, as you were a child? I was told uh, the Babi Yaga story, Babi Yaga stories, mm -hmm. when I was a child. Um, but very little more than that. I mean, little bits and pieces. Vasilisa the Brave with her doll in her pocket mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the story of Vasilisa and Babi Yaga. But um, not too much more than that. My step-grandmother would tell me those stories. Um, and it was... My husband collects fairy tales from all over mm -hmm. the world and he would... Um, translate them for me, you just read the Russian into English so that I could hear um, the, the stories themselves, Afanasyev's collections, but, but more than that, because he has collections of Chechen fairy tales and Ukrainian fairy tales and from all over uh, the former Soviet Union, because my, my husband is from Odessa, Ukraine, um, mm -hmm. and not uh, from Russia proper. And um, he, he read me the story of Maria Marevna and Koshe the Deathless, which I had never heard. And uh, that was that was the very first seed of that book. In fact, I told him, I'm, I'm going to write a book about this. Mm -hmm. you, you watch. Yes, and you won many awards for your works. Do they inspire you? And do you think about these awards when you're writing? Um, they do inspire me. They inspire me to write something just as good, to, to keep keep working at a level where people would like to give me awards. But I don't think about it when I'm writing too much. Um, what an award means to me is that I can probably sell another book, um, that I'll be able to tell another story. If I win an award, then, then it's very likely that I will, I will be able to, to tell one more tale. So every award means one more tale that I can safely tell. And, and so they're important to me in the sense that I have many more stories that I want to tell. But, um, the point of writing a book is, is not to win an award, it's not to be nominated for an award, it's, it's to tell a story that was important to you and have other people read it. Your first novel published in Hungary and is that best. Are you satisfied with the decision of Alaska? Or, or when, not, which one did you, would you have chosen? Um, the, the decision of Alaska? Uh, that that uh, Alaska has published uh, that best at first. Um, I'm thrilled with Ad Astra as a publisher. Um, they've been absolutely wonderful uh, and very, very much in contact with me. Sometimes you have editions come out 
um, and you've never heard from the publisher and you have no idea what their names are and, and Chula has been uh, the translator and, and editor has been very much in contact with me for months and months and I wrote an introduction for the Hungarian version which no other publisher has ever asked me to do. No other uh, non-English publisher has asked me to write an introduction and I was, I was absolutely thrilled to. Um, they've been really wonderful. I think the cover they chose is beautiful uh, and I'm, I'm very happy, very happy to be published in Hungarian. And the novel's title is Dantes, but the protagonist is not Kostya Dantes, but Maria Morevna. Why did you choose this title? You know, it's funny that you ask that because my American editor said that she thought I should change the title because she didn't feel that it referred to the protagonist of the novel. But um, Deathless, uh, in the context of the novel, means much more than, than Koshe the Deathless. It, it refers to uh, the, the tales, these, these tales that are themselves Deathless, and um, what it means to uh, live inside a fairy tale where you're, you're, you're repeating these stories that have um, happened before over and over and over again. There's so many different meanings to the word deathless and um, I really tried to come up with another title. I have some kind of list of 30 titles at home and none of them were right. None of them had as much meaning as deathless did and, uh, and so that's what it ended up being called. Mary Amorovna is a very strong female character and you're representing a strong woman yourself. And do you consider yourself a feminist? I absolutely consider myself And a feminist. what does feminism mean to you? Um, to me, feminism means that women are human beings, that women are the equal to men and should not be treated any differently uh, than men are treated. Uh, that's still a battle that is being fought all over the world, uh, both in the, in the West and in the East and the North and South. It is, it is something that is ongoing. Um, I think that women should uh, have every right. Should have, there, there, there should be no difference in the rights that are afforded to men and to women. Um, this is something that is coming under attack in my own country. Uh, it's something that is very important to me. And I can't do a whole lot. I'm one person. But what I can do is tell stories that both adult women and young women can read where they are not treated as something less, where their main concern is not just that they get married and have a boyfriend, where they are treated absolutely as real human beings with agency and the ability to choose their own fates, and that, that is my contribution to the battle. You have an intensive online presence. You have a website, Twitter and Facebook accounts, a blog, etc. Do you think this is necessary for an author? Um, I, don't, I don't think it's absolutely necessary. There are certainly authors who don't do it. Um, I've been blogging since the year 2000, long before I was publishing books. Uh, so it's, it's a part of my identity and how I interact with my own life. I, I'm always writing about the things that happen to me even before I write a novel about it. Um, but I think that it's very helpful for writers. Uh, I think that if you enjoy it and it's something that's fun for you, then it can only help. If you don't enjoy it and you just end up tweeting links to your books, that's not helping anything. <laughs> but uh, not being on the internet is certainly um, a detriment to a career these days. And, and the fact is that that kind of contact with your readers uh, it, it can be absolutely priceless. I started tweeting about Budapest and all of a sudden I had all of these Hungarian followers who were talking to me about the things that I should see. And that's not something that could have happened 20 years ago. I, I, I absolutely think it's, it's, a, it's a miracle of human connection. Mm -hmm. And you're not only a prose writer, but also a poet. Did you at first start uh, writing uh, poems or stories? Poems. Uh, I, I, well, I wasn't very successful at writing poems, uh, at, at publishing poems. I was very successful at writing poems. Uh, but I wrote poetry from the time I was 10 years old. I, I, it was my absolute love. I didn't write even a short story until I was 21. Um, poems were what I thought um, I would be expressing myself in. Uh, I didn't have much luck publishing them in the mainstream poetry world. Uh, mainly because I was writing poems about fairy tales and folk tales and all of these kinds of things that um, the mainstream poetry world didn't know what to do with. Uh, and when I was 22, I decided to see if I could write a novel, and that ended up being my first novel, which was called The Labyrinth, many, many years ago now. Um, but po poetry was uh, what made me, and it's, it's very much part of my heart, and I still write poetry. I have several poetry collections, and I will continue to write poetry. And I read in your blog, and you already said it, that you are also writing here in Budapest. I am. Is it a secret what you are currently working on? No, certainly not. Um, it's the 
third book in the Girls Who Circumnavigated Fairyland series. Um, I, there will be five books ultimately, and I'm working on the third one right now. Um, I think it's kind of funny that I started work on it in Finland, and I've been working on it in Hungary, and they have that language connection, the Ugaric languages. Um, it's a joke that only I find funny, but I, I, I find it amusing. Um, so yes, I've been uh, holed up in my, my wonderful apartment in downtown Budapest writing, writing about fairies on the moon. I think that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you.